It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Douglas Bowden, Doug Bowden from the University of Washington. He's going to talk about Neuromaps, a multimodality database in the shape of a brain. So Neuromaps is a multimodality database in the shape of the brain. And uh, uh, <clears throat> in fact, at this point, we're talking about two brains, a macaque and the Waxholm mouse atlas. And um, let's see. And I'd like to start off by going through the premises, our premises. And uh, these are <clears throat> a little bit modified from, from Mary Ann's, but I think basically in, in compatible. Uh, the first is neuroanatomy provides the visual scaffold and I'd say the common language for integrating information across scales, techniques, species, and so forth. Uh, neuroinformatics has been building platforms for, original, uh, for digital neuroanatomy for almost two decades, but now, up to now has not achieved the power of genomic informatics. And that is, if, if, you, if you're a geneticist and you have uh, established the nucleotide sequence of a new gene, you can go to any of a number of brain banks or gene banks, feed in that sequence, and you'll get back a list of all the brains of all the species that have that exact, that exact sequence. Uh, we should be able to do that in neuroanatomy, uh, but at the, at the present time, uh, we're not able to do that. <clears throat> Informatics requires that the information be made machine computable and unambiguously, I would say, human computable or interpretable, we should say. The computational challenges of neuroinformatics are addressed, I would say, better in terms of information theory and communication theory than in terms of the truth test computations of classical logic. And the main, the main implication of that statement is that in order to, to have a comprehensive uh, <coughs> nomenclature, comprehensive uh, list of all the structures in the brain, one has to start from the, all the names that are used in neuroanatomy. And uh, the ontology consists of relating those names to, uh, to all of the structures, the subparts of the brain that some <clears throat> legitimate neuroanatomist has defined. And uh, the main component of that ontology is to specify as many of those relationships as you can. You need to be able to specify if a term is, if a new term is a synonym of one that already exists, or if it's a homonym of the one that already exists that's being applied to a different structure. And the concepts that are represented by these terms are really uh, the definitions of the term. And, uh, and you can, in this last paper, you saw it gets down to the point of defining the boundary between two uh, structures in uh, right down to the cellular distribution level. So, um, uh, <clears throat> so I'm saying that, that uh, in contrast to classical logic, which works strictly with text, with words, word descriptions of stru structures, uh, mathematical logic can be applied to, to your atlas and to your categories within your atlas. And it allows variance analyses that involve measurement <coughs> and quantification, which is the hallmark of the scientific method. It allows 
it gives statistical means of dealing with probabilistic truth. That is, with the idea that, as a scientist, this is our best guess for today, and it's held up for 100 years, and so we're, we're believing it. But there's always a probability associated with that. And particularly when you get down to defining the lines between two structures, uh, there's definitely uh, probabilities you need to be able to deal with. You need an ontology that will allow you to deal with those. It allows parametric as well as non-parametric comparisons. And it allows uh, <coughs> particularly evaluation of the, the degree of overlap between spatial distributions. When uh, the classical logic uh, deals with categories and the, your smallest, the smallest element uh, that the classical logic deals with is, the, is one of these structures that you've seen that's defined with a boundary but the, uh, the basic element of a uh, digital atlas is one point, or one voxel, or one pixel. And it defines structures by giving you a list of all the voxels that are in that structure. And uh, that's a list that the human mind can't, can't deal with. So we needed the computer to calculate the areas or the volumes or whatever. So, um, uh, and the final statement I'd make on this is that one can compute anything by mathematical logic that one can compute by descriptive logic. But the op opposite is not true. So uh, I'm going to tell you about <clears throat> our system, which is based on those premises. And uh, it is that the computational capability of a digital atlas depends on a fully segmented atlas and a comprehensive ontology of brain structure. And so what we have at this point is the Neuromaps digital brain atlases uh, the macaque brain atlas is, has been uh, segmented down to, into approximately, I think, 400 uh, structures. And we don't go to the, except in the hippocampus, don't really go to this layer within structure or to the smallest subnuclei. But it's defined down to those levels. And we have the Waxholm mouse brain atlas, which we are hoping, uh, which has been subdivided, I think, into 50 or 70 structures. Um, but we're hoping to uh, uh, import the segmentation of the Allen brain uh, atlas so that one will be able to, which to my mind is the most uh, uh, the most comprehensive, most comprehensive atlas uh, that's available on the web at this point. So, and our ontology is in terms of neuronames, where we have defined the relationships between uh, some 3,000 structures uh, that di divi defined by various people, and. Um, and uh, we have standard names for those that are, each name is unique, which it's got to be if, you're, if your logic, whichever kind of logic you use, if it's going to be trustable. And uh, some 16,000 synonyms in eight different languages. So, so a person can go into brain info with any, any legitimate name for a structure, and uh, we will give you our standard name, and uh, then you can 
explore the rest of the system uh, and knowing that, that what you're looking for is this standard name. So, uh, and we have, we're now uh, completing going through all of those definitions and determining which ones apply in the human, the macaque, the rat, and the mouse. So one will be able, using any logic, classical or, or mathematical, uh, will be able to ask the question, OK, I'm interested in uh, what genes are distributed in this particular area. Uh, the uh, only data on that may be, is probably going to be uh, from the Allen Brain Institute Atlas. Uh, but you're interested in the human. So you go into Brain Info, you look it up in the human, and then we'll tell you whether there is a mouse structure that is equivalent, as equivalent as anybody knows to this point, to that structure. So let's, uh, I have a feeling my time is going fast, so let's just look at three qu questions here. Um, what's required of a neuro, to use this system, what is required of a neuroscientist who wants to communicate data to others in a common format? Then what's, and, uh, uh, then what is required of neuroscientists who want to compare their data with other kinds of data from other sources, multimodality data? And then what is required of neuroinformaticists who want to create facilities that will fulfill the wants of these neuroscientists? <clears throat> so first, the sci what's required of the scientist if he wants to if he basically wants to put his data into a common format so other people can look at it. First, he conducts an experiment and creates an image, or multiple images, that shows the location of data relative to neuroanatomical features identifiable in a canonical digital brain atlas of the species. He downloads the canonical atlas and the mapping software from a neuroinformatics facility, downloads the tool. He maps the data to the atlas, and the tool should provide the tools, sub-tools for doing that. Edits and labels the image of the map data into a format suitable for presentation or publication, and then downlo downloads that back to his desktop and em embeds it embeds that image in a slideshow and or um, a manuscript. And this is what uh, neuro, Neuromaps does. Neuromaps allows you to bring up the image of the MRI atlas uh, in one screen and the uh, image of your slide in another screen, then you can Go through the go through the brain in coronal or whatever direction you want to go. You can tilt and rotate uh, the atlas until you get the plane that most clearly matches your data. <clears throat> then you identify uh, equivalent landmark landmarks in the two, and then and you can put in any number of landmarks. So if you're mainly interested in the, down in the hippocampus, you just put in landmarks, everything you can find that relates to that. Then you um, warp that image. Uh, well, what you, what you actually do is you, you warp the atlas image to the, um, to the experimental image, and then you unwarp it back, and it, that, that carries the data into your canonical atlas, where it would into the equivalent locations. Then you take that image and uh, load it into the image editor, and this is showing 
how we have mapped the uh, cortical areas in one of the, from one of the mouse atlases to the Waxholm brain. And uh, now we can adjust the colors that we want to use for publication. We can uh, add labels. And we can determine whether the label is black on white or white on black. And we can adjust the size of the labels. Uh, <coughs> And you can adjust the DPI, the dots per inch, and the size of the image for the, whatever journal, whatever their specifications are. And uh, download this in a, a <coughs> download this and then import it into your, into your document. And this is the same sort of thing we've done with the monkey brain and we've mapped uh, from the Paxinos, uh, <coughs> Paxinos macaque atlas. And this shows uh, the, the kind of value added that you can provide to the investigator by using this system. Because if, if, if your system doesn't add value, there are very few uh, investigators who are going to bother to use it. Uh, and so in the upper left, you see uh, dopaminergic cells that have been mapped to the prefrontal cortex. And uh, uh, if you look on the, the left side is the image that was published. And on the right, we have mapped those dots into the atlas superimpose the subdivisions of the atlas from uh, the Paxinos atlas. Or, uh, no, actually, we just we subdivided on the basis of the uh, sulci and gyri. Um, but you can see that whereas in the first one, uh, the left one, it's, it's pretty unclear what the, uh, uh, where those cells are anatomically. Uh, in the one that after the mapping, you can see that they're clustered right at the boundaries between the cerebral cortex and the white matter, which is, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, anyway, same sort of thing for a lesion study on, on the top right. On the, top, on the bottom left, uh, I've plotted from some of our own work uh, a... Um, an electrode track where we were studying the, uh, uh, I think you get the point. Let's go on to. <laughs> okay, what's required of a neuroscientist who wants to compare map data with other kinds of data? I've separated this out because everything I've said so far is actually done on your own computer. Uh, but if you want to compare it with everybody else's, you've got to upload it. So what you do is you, you map your data to the canonical digital brain atlas, just as I uh, described. You upload the images of, uh, to the neuroinformatics facility together with identifying information, such as uh, a text, a complete text description of the methods, and metadata for unambiguous indexing of the data set. And the metadata terms for the metadata are pulled out of our neuro, <coughs> neuro names. Then you, re you request a comparison with all other data sets that are in the repository and a list in the repository. Uh, and a list of those that overlap your data by a certain proportion. And this is, uh, can be done in, in 3D. Uh, views overlap with other, then if, if you go through the list and you find something that's particularly interesting, you should be able to uh, call up the image of that map, those, that map overlaid on yours so you can visually judge. And, um, uh, and if that's still interesting, you should be able to pull up the original image from which the mapping was done. So let's just go real quick to, this is what it looks like in neuromaps where we've overlaid Walker's Area 46 and, and 
uh, I think probably Broadman's corresponding area. If you want to know what the information, and this is really the guts of the talk, so, so, I'm, <laughs> so I'm just going to go through it. I should say that uh, we're at a very kind of critical point in our development of this system and that we're working on the strategic aims basically for the next five years. And if there's any part of what I'm going to say here that you think you have a tool that uh, could do the job as well or better, I'd like you to talk to me because maybe we can incorporate it into that project. So uh, <clears throat> the Informatis has to provide a canonical digital brain atlas of the species that people are going to we're going to be able to map into. It needs to provide a comprehensive ontology, and it's now available as neuronames. Need to provide definitions and standard names. <coughs> the, the ontology needs to provide definitions and standard names for every term. And the, uh, the facility needs to maintain a repository of all map data so that uh, when somebody wants to know how much it overlaps with theirs, it's already in the computer and it just creates the list. So with that, thank you very much. Set up, if there's a question, we can have a question from the audience. Um, I have one. Doug, does that put it out? Does Neuromaps work in coordinate space, or is it just its own internal space? Uh, well, the Neuromaps? Yeah. Does it put it out in what? Coordinates. I mean, all uh, are, are those structures referenced in the coordinates? Uh, uh, yes. The, the Atlas has, as you're mapping in and as you present it, there are uh, scales on, on the two sides. Does that map to stereotactic space, or is it just an internal? Uh, it would be very easy to define it in, in stereotactic space. I mean, it's in the computer in stereotactic space, yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, Doug. Um